KDRT 95.7 FM. The show is our special pop-up show called Live in the Loam. Uh, in that show, we feature guests that are traveling throughout the area. And this week, we have a very special guest with us. And I want to welcome Dirk Hamilton. Dirk, welcome to Live in the Loam. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, you are traveling throughout the area. You're going to be playing in uh, the Palms Playhouse in Winters, uh, November the 8th. That's Saturday. That's Saturday. 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock. And you're hitting uh, several uh, of the venues around here in, in Berkeley, I believe, uh, and other places. And uh, you're originally from Indiana, but you grew up here. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, really, Stockton or Sacramento? I kind of read both. Oh, well, my parents uh, moved to uh, Sacramento when I was four, and they took me with them. Right. And I grew up pretty much in, in Sacramento. Went okay. To, uh, lived in Parkway Estates and uh, went to Fern Bacon Junior High School, Luther Burbank High School. Then my senior year, they moved to, my dad was transferred to Stockton, and I was in Stockton for a couple of years. Were you already playing music back then? Um, I started when I was about eight. Guitar or piano? Guitar, or? and uh, played it off and on just for fun, and, and I got real serious about it when I was like 14. Right, right. We had a, had a surf band in, uh, in uh, Sacramento. Nice. Uh, 17 albums already, uh, and uh, you mentioned that uh, one of your favorite ones is the one that uh, was just reissued again, and, the, and I think you recorded that uh, 15, 20 years ago, Yeah. Uh, and that's called Soup Suffer Up a Chuckle. Very good. Suffer Up a Chuckle. What, what does that really mean? In Italy, they have a saying called, uh, it says, uh, Suffering is the teacher of life, and I noticed that seems to have been a theme, and that has, I don't know, it seems to, it was, a, it has been a theme that I hit over and over again in my songs, and then when I realized it, and I saw there's a lot of that theme in that uh, right. album, and I tried to, I was figuring out what am I going to call this thing, and at some point it just popped into my head, suffer up a chuckle, laugh till it hurts, hurt till you laugh. Nice. Suffering, sofferenza yeah. e la maestra di vita. Our, uh, in Italian. our uh, audio fellow, Peter Bohm, who you met a little bit ago, said that uh, we talked about you being very popular in Italy and here, and he said, no wonder you're so popular in Italy when we see your YouTube performances. You're very animated, very Italian almost. Could that be part of the reason you're so well liked over there? I never have an idea what if why people like me or don't like me. Well, sometimes I have an idea why they don't like me. I don't know. Okay. I, you know, for I think mostly I'm a I'm a poet. I'm a I'm a word songwriter, and they don't understand my words. So when I first the few first five six years I started playing, I played there. I was kind of like baffled by it and disturbed by it, but. At some point, I realized that they're, you know, some, I'm doing something. There's something in the music there yeah. that that's making them feel something. Yeah, yeah. And I've decided to look at it, look at it as a positive. I uh, I want to talk about your lyrics a little bit more after you've played a song or two for us, uh, because uh, it is very poetic. And I notice one thing about your lyrics is they're very, uh, yeah, down to earth but they give you an example of uh, uh, life in a little twisted different way, like bump in the day. Remember that line? Things that go bump in the day. There's things that go bump thing, in, yeah, you turn it around. Because we as children know the, know the story, things that go bump in the night. Right. So you switched it around. Yeah, it's fun to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you play a song for us to begin things off with? Yes, I can. Perfect. And what's the name of this one? I don't know yet. I haven't oh. decided what to play. Okay. Well, we'll give you a few moments here. This is for the, it's called, it's a, this one I started writing like in 1974, I think. Yeah. 
around there, and I finished it like about eight months ago. Wow. 84, 94, 104, 40 years in the making. Yeah, but I didn't work on it constantly. I just, yeah, yeah. I even forgot about it, and then it came back to me, and uh, finally I was to the point where I could finish it. Let's hear it. Somebody help me, I feel like I'm dying. My heart keeps pumping the poison through. From a crack in my cave, I can see to the outside. But I'm hungry and aching, too weak to crawl through. watched as I sat and reflected on all of the bodies I've touched with my hands and all of my fingerprints left on the windows that I could see through but could never get in I've searched for Petulia. She's graceful and golden and silent like ice. She burns on my head like a flame on a candle. That's cold in the day, but it's a fire in the night. I jot it Sit down. down. Yeah, yeah, have a seat, have a seat. Uh, I jot it down one line I heard, cold during the day and a fire at night. Yeah. <laughs> well, that says something to me. What's it say to you? Well, you know, it, uh, it means someone comes alive during the evening hours. And I, I was trying to follow the, the lyrics in the song, but I was having a little trouble because uh, they were telling me with my computer things weren't going 100%. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, what that song, uh, you're trying to say with that song. I'm not a big fan of, that one's a tough one. It's, uh, the first song I ever wrote was, of any account, was a song called Batulia's Hair. I was about 15 then, I think. And that seems to be another theme in my life is searching for something I can never quite get. We all do that, I think, don't we? And there's some female about it. Oh. I don't know if it's literally a female or a, I don't know. And in the song I say, by streams and by rivers, I've searched for Petulia. Man, my guitar is really out of tune. It's this weather. Sorry. It's the weather in Northern California. 
or I bumped it against my leg while we were just sitting oh. there doing nothing. <clears throat> so uh, we uh, we talked a little bit about lyrics, and you you described yourself as a poet. Would you say you're a poet first and a musician second, or do they kind of combine? I don't know. I don't even know if I'm a poet. Oh, <laughs> all most of what I say is just guesses about the music. I don't stop. I don't finish a song until I know it's finished. It's finished. I feel it. Yeah, yeah. But as far as talking about that stuff, that's always kind of uh, just kind of shooting the breeze yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. It's all in the songs, you know. But it's interesting you say once you finish the song, it's finished because I've had artists in here that. If, if we're playing a, a, a song from their CD or something and it's in the background, they'll say, please, I don't want to hear it because I, I always hear something I can fix. Are you like that also when you hear one of your songs out of one of your 17 CDs? No, I'm pretty good at... At... Uh, zoom out. Zoom out, yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, we, this cameraman's talking. Uh, yeah, a lot. I know he's talking. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, I'm going to read a couple of your lyrics, and uh, just just for you guys to hear, and then we'll have you sing another song, okay? And that is uh, dangerous, and life is hard in a world of nuclei, nuclei. Nuclear. You, nuclear, you, 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 nuclear, you said nuclear, but uh, it, you spell it N-O-O-K-E-L-Y, nuclear bombs. Nuclear bombs. Nuclear bombs. So uh, anyways, uh, people who need people, they must be very happy here, but I wish I could take a couple of million and rocket ship somewhere else. Who wrote that? that? You wrote it. No, somebody <laughs> messed it up. So it was like an Italian did it or well, something. No. People who need people must be very happy here, but I yeah. wish a couple billion would take a rocket ship away somewhere. Yeah. You're not reading it right. Oh, sorry. Alrighty, I misread <clears throat> it. Okay, why don't you sing a song for us here? <laughs> Strains for us with everybody bowing over cellular phones. Look at the sunset, materialize. It's yelling like the blood of a bug dripping down the dirty purple skies. Electric light has canceled the night. I 
I'm walking down the street, thinking on my feet. I wonder how the ground feels covered in concrete. When a man falls in a city, you know it doesn't make a sound. The ghosts of all the wild things that man has displaced, they howl and growl and they haunt this place. They croak and sing, invisible wings are flapping around my face. I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, watching a thousand fish decay. Money does the talking, and the money don't care. comes up at the grocery store, for instance, when I reach a pain, says something like, hi, how's it going? I just go, around me. Got my deflector shield up. <laughs> you, you, you popped those words alive. My God, wonderful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Do you play a lot solo by yourself, or uh, or do you hook up with your band? It, like when you're touring here, like when you'll be at the Palms this Saturday, is it going to be solo or with a group? No, I'm doing playing solo gigs this tour. Okay, okay. I play as much with the bands as I got. I front an Italian band in Italy called the Blues Man. Right. That's fun. And also play solo and duo. And, and same here. Well, I have I got a guy's an American band too, but man, here it's harder and harder to get gigs with a band you can't afford it, especially traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the band in Italy. Do you stay primarily in Italy, or do you uh, uh, go around Europe? Uh, we play, and I play outside of Italy, but mostly it's Italy. I did a bunch of records with big companies in the. 70s and uh, right, you, you they sold real well in Italy. And when I found out about that, I started going to Italy a lot. Okay, okay, yeah, because I I'd read that uh, the is it was it the producer of Steely Dan heard you and started producing some of your your uh, records at the beginning there. He produced the first one. Okay, Gary Katz. Yeah, in fact, okay. I'm talking to him right now about maybe doing another one. <clears throat> Same uh, venue, because you had said that possibly uh, he kind of manipulated, or I shouldn't use the word manipulate, but made you do some things that weren't natural to you on that first or maybe second album. Well, no, he didn't manipulate me. In fact, I had the most fun making that record of maybe any record. Or it was one of the f most fun records I ever made. We hit it off great. 
Uh, but he, he does records like uh, Steely Dan did records. It's yeah. very, very meticulous, everything perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from him, I learned how to make records. And in the process, I realized, whoa, I should be making records exactly the opposite of this. Okay. So we still wanted to work together, but it, I said, can you make records? I want to do it basically live in the studio and just right. sweeten it a bit afterwards. And he says, I make records how I make them, and I can't. Yeah, yeah. So we parted ways, but we didn't part ways as friends. And now he says he can make records like I want to make them, so... Uh, that could be cool after all okay. these. It's been over 35 years or something. He's still in L.A.? No, he's in New York. Oh, New York. He's a New okay. York guy. But he was in L.A. when we did the first one. And you're based out of Texas now, I believe, right? Yeah, I live in Dallas. Okay, all righty. Well, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that last song. Uh, hopefully you can do another one for us here. Right now? Absolutely. Well, you're working me, dude. Oh, I'm working you all right. That's why you're here. <laughs> all right. I don't know what to do. Oh, I know what to do. Here we go. Uh, Kurt told me, the, the fellow sitting there told me when he was playing harmonica, he had to, he, you couldn't buy those things at that, uh, back in the day, and he had to make his own. Out well, of maybe wood. Not, maybe <laughs> not in Sweden, or where are you from? Sweden. Sweden. Not in Sweden, but you can buy them here. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that we're talking 30s, I guess, huh? Oops. Well, what do you get? You can always get it from Honer, and that's just right next door in Germany. Do you remember the Germans? <laughs> so what? Uh, wh now I like call us uh, uh, a music store, and I said I'm looking for harmonica racks, and the kids go, "Well, we have harmonicas. No harmonica racks, you know." He said, "What? They don't know what it is." Now they call them harmonica holders. Oh, holders. Yeah. Harmonica racks. Come on. Yeah, yeah. This is, I used to live in uh, Austin, Texas. Outside Austin, Maynard, Texas. And this one was inspired by this. is brand new. This hasn't been recorded. Okay. It's called, I don't know what it's called yet. <laughs> Down in Maynard, Texas, where we used to live, in a house full of scorpions, light old water ridge, water moccasins in the water, snapping turtle stew, wet chiggers, snakes and hornets, and cactus stick you too. It was a head, it was a head on the neck. It was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him. You were the head. You were the head on the neck. It was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him. Tornadoes in the distance, lightning all around. The wind hit like an invisible train and tore the oak tree down. Eardrum crack and thunder directly overhead. Wife and kids are in the bathtub underneath the mattress bed. It was a head. It was a head on the neck. It was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him. You were the head. You were a head on the neck. It was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him. broke a window, sucked the air out of a room. I ran down the stairway, 
into a raccoon. We both jumped up screaming. We both ran different ways. A cabbage patch doll named Clint came to life that day and started for the bedroom and the wife and kids. So I threw them out the window. That's exactly what I did. Rolling and tumbling, he twisted up the eyes. Where he taught the wicked witches just what wicked was. He would have had, he would have had on the neck. There was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him. He would have had, he would have had on the neck. There was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him. of a snake bit man outside the house that day everything has changed now since that sixth of may what happened had to happen what else can i say you would have had you would have had on the neck it was a head on the neck on the tail of a snake that bit him you would have had What a head on the neck It was a head on the neck On the tail of a snake that fed him It was a heart It was a heart on the chest It was a heart in the chest In the body of the man That quit him Very nice. Have, have, have a seat, Dirk. Uh, you need to rest for a second here. <laughs> you know, you had all, everything going there. Your feet, you were, you were hitting the, the body of the guitar, you were playing, harmonica, your voice. Uh, you seemed like you were in the moment in that song. Well, that's where you want to be. There you go. <laughs> Start thinking about stuff, you get in trouble. You know, and, and I noticed uh, that they were actually mm. shooting uh, pictures of you stomping your feet. So I, I, I hope mm. you put your best shoes on for this. I did. Okay, good mm. deal. <laughs> so in uh, one of the uh, articles I read about you, I think it was uh, the, the one where you were talking about this uh, CD, uh, you had mentioned that there's a way to organize the songs one after another that makes it flow. I was wondering if you could expand on that a little bit so I could understand. Well, we call that sequencing. It's sequence. Sequencing, yeah. Sequence of the album. And uh, that album was really easy to sequence. It just kind of came together. But I've, I've done albums that it just took forever, weeks and weeks, and just were. Just trying to figure out the way that the, which song goes where. Yeah. Wow. And I was having really. Tr there's one of my favorite records called Yep, and uh, I was. I asked a friend. I was t complaining to a friend about it, and he said, "Well, there's a lot of choices." I said, "How many choices are there? There's 13 songs." Yeah, yeah. He said, "Well, the, I know a guy that's really good at math. Something about." F factor or some kind of factor. Anyways, like millions. There's millions of different ways you could you could uh, <laughs> arrange 13 different songs. So, do you have an album that stands out that's in your mind the best sequence? No. No. Once I do it, once I got the sequence, and that's about the last thing you do. Well, then you got a master. Well, okay, so you sequence it, but then, so is it, 
the type of songs that you try to put together or the wording in the songs or a combination of both? Like, do you want to go from a snappy song to a more of a bluesy, slow song? I have no concepts. I just do everything by feel. Uh, how, the way I write, the way I sequence, the way I, yeah, I do everything like that. Like a painter. Just feel how it feels, and when it feels right, you go, okay, this is it. Hopefully you get to a point on whatever you're doing that, it, okay, this is right. And usually I do it, and sometimes you, you just gotta abandon, okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I abandon this because I'm stumped. This is yeah. the best I can do, I think. You uh, mentioned that the previous song you sang is a new one. Are you working on a new CD? I'm always writing. And once it uh, feels like I've, it's time to make a CD, then I, then I start, now how the heck am I going to make a CD with no money? <laughs> and off you go. And you I'll, make it work. It's magical. I don't know how I do it or how I continue, but uh, I'm very grateful that uh, it's been working, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you seem to keep them busy. When I saw, uh, you know, your schedule, you're popping up all over the place. Yeah, just managing to keep busy and squeak through. Yeah, uh, I my think son. I got. A, I have a son. He's 19 now. Yeah, he was like three about. Felt like about uh, two years ago. But he went. He's going to be a singer-songwriter. He's already, He's a better musician than I am. Wow. And he's. I saw him play in Dallas. Uh, a few weeks ago, and he's got it. I mean, he's not just, it's not technique, it's something indefinable that makes an artist. Yeah, yeah, an artist. Uh, what genre of music he's is he got into? It. Same kind of stuff I am, okay. but he's influenced with stuff the kids are hearing on the on YouTube. Of and, course. And other influences, yeah. but I'm really lucky. He thinks I'm like the cast pajamas. He thinks I'm really cool. Isn't Both my kids, I got a 13-year-old daughter. They say, watch out, the teenagers, Teenage years, but they both think I'm great, and I think they're great, and they're really at home in their skins, looking you right in the eyes. They're funny. They're perceptive. Yeah. I'm blessed. Uh, do you ever perform with your son? He, I played a gig in Oklahoma just like last month, and uh, he sat in for the first time. Oh, nice. And uh, played some songs with me. Has he uh, recorded on any of the CDs that uh, you've got out? No, I mean, no. He's just, I just found out he's actually a real player uh, last week. Or also the uh, experience of having him sit in on some songs, I realized, wow. Because I said, okay, you play these four songs, yeah. and I'm not going to, I'll play them with you once, then you got the records, and we're not going to play them again until the gig. Right, right. And he just did it. He took off. Uh, did, uh, when did he pick up his guitar? At what age? When he'd pick up my guitar? Your guitar, yeah. yeah. Uh, Early on, I would imagine. I yeah. I don't, I don't even remember. It just seems like he's been tinkering around with guitars forever, and I didn't pay much attention, and then all of a sudden he caught my attention a couple years ago. I just read where uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, you know, he's in the news again because he's putting out uh, a brand new album. And uh, when he was eight years old, his father mortgaged their home to buy Jerry Lee Lewis a piano. Really? You can imagine. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, the whole concept is just so unbelievable for me. But if you're in, if you have a musical mind and, you know, that's your way of expressing yourself, I can see that happening. I wouldn't be doing it. You wouldn't be doing it. No, because I've been in the music business. I when well, guitar's a little easier than a piano. When my son's name's Chavis, when he announced that that's what he's going to do, that's his passion, I said, well, you see how I live. Yeah. You see how hard it is. Yep. And then uh, I said, okay, you, I, you know, they need to do what everybody needs to do with their right. follow their bliss, right, right, follow right. their passion. So I said, okay, you got my blessing. All right. Anything I can do for you. So I'm not going to be mortgaging anything to help you. Yeah, but you're, you're one of the 1% of musicians that 
makes it a living. I mean, we have a lot of people that come, yeah. you know, into the studio and sing, and by the time they're 25, they're getting married, and they need they need stuff, and uh, and they're going to do it later. And they're going to do it later. I never met one of these guys who said they're going to do it later. Do it later, no. except for on a very you know play for the old folks' home or something. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> So you don't do old folks' homes yet? Well, I guess I'll be doing it because my dad's in one now. How old's your dad? I think he's going to be 88. Like Is he a musician? 70. Nope. Straight bit. We couldn't be more dissimilar. How about your mother? She's gone. and She's, uh, she's just a mom. She's real good at loving. So what kind of music was being played in your house when you grew up at home? What, what did they turn the radio to? Man, I'm so old, I remember Elvis Presley starting. Okay. When I was, I think I was five. And we, they just listened, and then later on, they just, uh, well, Dad had gone working all the time. She'd just have the little thing in the kitchen, the little radio. Right. And, uh, well, everybody had radios. So I'd be listening, to, wherever there's a radio, I'd be listening to it. And I remember the just being rapturous listening to uh, Roy Orbison and, uh, okay, so and kind of Everly Brothers, all oh, that yeah, stuff from yeah, back yeah. then. A great yeah, time. We just lost one of them, didn't we, Don yeah. Everly? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever do cover songs in your uh, uh, CDs or on tour? Very uh, occasionally. Okay. Hardly ever. Yeah. I think it'd be nice to, uh, when, when uh, an artist like Don Everly or somebody leaves, uh, to hear some of, some of their songs again being done in covers. But you rarely do that. Yeah, and I, unless I can bring something new to it, unless I just happen to be tinkering around with something. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while I'll find something and say, whoa, that's kind of cool and I like it. But mostly, I, I, I want to hear their original people singing. Right, right. I don't want to hear people singing Everly Brothers songs except for Phil and Don. Yeah. Uh, if people want to know a little bit more about you, where do they go? You have a website. DirkHamilton.com. Right. D-I-R-K. Hamilton. Yes. No dot in between it. And Dirk, where does that name come from? That to me, I have a brother called Dirk. And uh, uh, it's European. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's baffling because my mom and dad are straight Midwestern people. Just couldn't get more normal than them. And my dad comes up with, or one of them came, or both of them came up with Dirk. I always liked that name. <laughs> and all my life, it was like I never met another Dirk for till I was in my 30s. It was a very <laughs> rare. It's a very name. rare name. Not 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 now though. It's like. Then I went to Germany, and Dirk's like Bob over there. Everybody's <laughs> Dirk. And, okay, and you have a Facebook page. Yeah. So that's Facebook slash Dirk Hamilton I with an I. I guess so. I don't, I just seem to, they just, I know how to get there, but I don't know how to tell anybody else to get there. I also got a fan page, so I got, yeah, I got all that where stuff. Do, where, where do you go for a fan page? I don't know. There's a little picture of me that I know is from the fan page right there, so I click it, and then it takes me. <laughs> but do you have it hooked into your Facebook or to your web page? No. Maybe. I don't oh, know. Okay, well, if you I'm want really... to know more, Google Dirk Hamilton. All sorts of things don't pop up, Dirk. right? Don't ask Dirk. If you want to know more, don't ask me, because I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'm well, really old school. You know, we're, uh, we're slowly uh, running a little low on, well, not real low, but a little low on time. I would like to get one or two more songs in. Hopefully you've got that in you. And while you're getting ready, I want to remind people that November 8th at the Palms in Winters, you'll be playing, and I think the show starts at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock it is. 8 yep. o'clock. And, uh, you know, if there is a venue in this part of uh, Yolo County, or in all of Yolo County, the Palms is the best, I think. It's, uh, have you played there before? i played there since, for like decades. So you played when they were here in Davis, the Palms? Yeah. Wow. That okay, man, you are an old magical, timer. <laughs> magical times. 
Yeah, the palms in, uh, in Davis, uh, if you can remember, you could look through the cracks in the wall seeing outside. That's how sturdy that structure was. Yeah. So, well, we're looking forward to seeing it's you. It's a magical there. place. I love it, and I'm really glad to be able to play it. Oh, Keith Carey, local celebrity. Yes. Is going to sit in with me. We're becoming good friends. We, when did, did, where did you meet him? Last time I came through, I had a guitar problem, and, they, and I asked David, who books the palms, right. who to go to. He said, go to Keith Carey. So Absolutely. I went to him, and he fixed my problem, and we ended up sitting in his barn playing music for the next couple hours. And yeah. Then I was doing a house concert, and I said, you want to sit in? He said, yeah. Yeah. And I just love him. Great and, guy. And a wonderful we have the same human taste being. in music. Yeah, it seems to be a great guy. We're going to get together tomorrow and maybe go through a couple songs. And he's in a number of bands around here. That's why I felt like I was really lucky to, when I call, got here. I called yeah. him and said, You want to sit in? And I was surprised he was free to do it. He played, uh, he played with, uh, I forget the fellow's name, but used to be one of the fish. Uh, uh, Joe McDonald? Melton. Melton, that's it, yes. Oh, hey, he is Country Joe. Yeah, Country Joe, yeah. And uh, he sat in and played uh, some tunes with him, uh, I don't know, six, seven months ago. So, okay, what are you going to play for us here? I'm going to play a song called Everybody's Blues. Okay. When a baby cries It's not because it's sad And all the suffering you do Is here to teach you It's not because you're bad Through dreams That never last on dandelion parachutes we pass And everyone from everywhere Has everybody's blues Everyone gets everybody's blues Everywhere you look, everyone you see There's a story they can tell Where comedy and tragedy hold hands And jump all wishing well And the good guy lights the candles on the cakes God's birthday party celebrates And everyone From everywhere Has everybody's blues Everyone Gives everybody's blues From the Big Bang fade We'll be keeping every promise that was made Cause everyone From everywhere Has everybody's blues Everyone Gives everybody's blues
That's a tearjerker. Huh? You're kind of like... <laughs> I'm going to have to hand out the Kleenexes here. No, that's, that's gorgeous. When did you oh, write you. that? That's one of those gimme songs. They just went... One I was sitting there and that just came. Wow. Those are the best kind of songs that just, it's just, that's why I love this work so much is you're dealing with, you're just right on the fringes or in magic, indefinable stuff that makes life so cool. You know, uh, the Rolling Stone, Keith Richards said he's never written a song in his life. He just sits with his guitar and he just picks the tune out of the air and he can't take credit for any of it. And he's sort of talking like you are, you know? Like all of a sudden it's there. You write it down and... Well, I'm taking some credit myself though, because <laughs> I really work hard at that. <laughs> I got a feeling Keith like comes up with this really cool, these cool ideas or maybe a word or two and, and I think uh, Mick does all the most of and, the And he might the have a little help. Stuff. He might have a little help too with uh, uh, isn't he famous for his uh, uh, use of enhancements to uh, help him along? Who? Keith Richards. <laughs> I'm not talking about yeah, you Yeah, but here. I think he's, at this point he's, uh, <laughs> I think he's talking more about doing drugs than doing them. I oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That was wonderful, really. That was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Uh, I hope uh, you've got that on the agenda for... Uh, for the Palms this, this coming Saturday, because people will be mesmerized, especially after they've had a beer or two. Right? I don't know. You don't know. You're asking too hard of questions. No, I, I think they're very easy. It's easy. You just want to make I it should so just say yes. I should just... No, 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 no. I need more than a yes answer. But anyway, uh, I'm the kind of guy that, like, if you ask me a question, I really answer it. Like somebody says, "How you doing?" You know, just and don't want you to just, just go, "Huh," and yeah, then yeah, that you're yeah. done. I like to start telling them, and I've got to. I try to stop doing that because people don't want to know. I, but I think people do want to know when we're talking with you, when people are here to listen. Well, we're doing it, yeah. Okay. So in this circumstance, but. so uh, you're off to. You're planning a European tour now. I hear. Well, it's been it's become a tradition where I play uh, Europe every summer, fronting the blues band, and, and also supplement that with doing solo and duo gigs around uh, Italy. And, and when you go there, how long do you spend there? Well, last time I was there for so long, I had trouble getting out. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Fan visa of, problems or? This fan of mine that's become a friend has been paying for my airfare with his frequent fly on, flyer miles. Really? Yeah. But he had, Italian? No, he's American. Oh. Just he wants to help out. You know, I'm just so blessed with wow. friends. It's, just, it's amazing. I couldn't do what I do without... I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. Don't we all? Well, yeah, don't we all? Well, I don't know. Another hard question, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> So you're on your way. I like so these you, intellectual you, you, shows. <laughs> you, you didn't answer the question, though. But how long do you stay? Three months, one month, six months? Well, last time I stayed three months, like over three months, three months and a week or something. Everything was fine until I got Germany. And then this guy, I really felt like I knew what it was like being uh, where the Nazis were there because he really had a problem with that. You broke the rules. What rules? You broke Because I stayed longer than three months, and apparently... Well, what I learned from him is that if you stay longer than three months, you need a visa to be there. Oh. So he really wanted me to stay there, you know, and... and keep playing. And, you know, probably put me in a concentration camp or something. <laughs> but they, he couldn't, so they, I just, uh, he just gave me a lot of trouble, and then I got in the plane and... and Took off. Flew home. Perfect. Well, we got time for one more song, so we're going to ask you to sing one more, and uh, then we'll wrap it up here. As you're looking at, uh, my goodness, you've got lots of songs written down there. Man, this is just a little, I'm like approaching like th 300 songs, I think. That you've written? Yeah. Because I've been doing it forever. Is it hard to memorize songs? 
I write poetry sometimes, <laughs> and I right. feel it. I feel it, it's very difficult for me to memorize a poem, even though you write it yourself. But musicians seem to know all these words; they just keep coming. Is I was just thinking about that. I don't know why, for some reason, the other day, and it was. Uh, I think I've been doing it for so long, you get good at memorizing. Okay. Plus, yeah. I got kicked out of public school, and they, oh, they, somebody told me they, you can't get kicked out of public school. <laughs> well, my parents told me I was kicked out, <laughs> and they took me to a Lutheran school, and there, man, we were memorizing right and left there, like the ni real interesting stuff, like the Nicene Creed, <laughs> the Ten Commandments and their explanations. <laughs> Well, could so you I recite think, the Ten Commandments for us here? I can't even, I don't even know them <laughs> anymore, let alone their explanations. I think I just, yeah, that started it and then having to know songs. Well, to answer your question, I have no idea if you can get kicked out of public school. Uh, they do, they're school people and you can't. You can't? Yeah, there's, you go to public school, you're stuck. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're stuck with you. So and I you're stuck some, with them. Some jubilation when my parents <laughs> pulled me out of there. All okay, right, well, what are we going to say? I really enjoyed this. I kind of gave you some trouble, but. Well, and we had a few issues along with everything else. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been hell. It, the first few minutes was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a song called Follow Your Bliss. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. We're going to wrap it up after you. Well, no, I think we've got to wrap it up now. So sing it. Thank you for. Being with me, remember fun. the Palms, November 8th at 8 o'clock in Winters. And then <laughs> remember to show up. And then Berkeley. Yeah. When is Berkeley? Berkeley was Sunday. Last Sunday? Yeah. Then we don't need to talk about it. How did the show go? Who's go good? Who's going to, the, to, the, to my show at the Palms? Most All of right. us. Most of us. Oh. <laughs> oh, and someone from the studio. Hey, before we go, I need to re need to thank Peter, uh, the sound engineer, Una, the uh, producer, and uh, Chris. No, Chris is gone. I'm sorry, I forgot the cameraman's name. Tyler, for uh, helping us out here, and Diane, of course, who sort of is masterminding uh, and helping everybody. She fills in and does everything. So thank you guys. Yeah, thanks, y'all. And here we have Dirk Hamilton singing, I didn't hear the name of the song. Follow Your Bliss. Follow Your Bliss, that's it. I'm trapping all the strings attached to the gifts you gave me. Rolling off a log I was thinking was a lifeboat to save me.
And he'll say, life is very simple. Follow your bliss. I saw Joseph Campbell riding on a camel with slaves to sell in Kabul. He said, I feel a fool. He sheathed his scimitar and said, reincarnation is a bitch. Whatever you think it is, it's not. But follow your bliss. Well, I followed my bliss. But did I follow my 